this tractor has a nice twist and pull feature. You don't have to mess around with the drain plug. The hose just gets it away from the frame. So you don't get oil all over it. I'm just lifting up the left hand side a small amount to help get the last of the oil out of the engine since it's so cold. I got this wrench out of the back of a clearance bin at the local hardware store for $5. It's awesome and simple. You can see I'm dipping my finger in the used oil. You rub some on the rubber gasket of the new filter. This is a classic trick a lot of people don't know. What it really does is it makes it easy to remove the filter a year from now. When you put a new oil filter on, you don't need to crack tighten it on. Just good and snug is enough, otherwise it will be impossible to get off. Another rookie mistake I learned years ago. Sometimes these filters have an orientation, it will say in or out on it. Usually I just put the new one in the same way the old one was and you can't screw it up. Put a side by side here on the X-T2, which is the tractor I have, which is a V-twin and has a different shape air filter. They're both pretty easy to take out. I'll admit when I do this kind of stuff, I really don't like working on engines. I just go up to the tractor dealership I bought it from and tell them I need everything to do the service. I'm sure there's cheaper ways to get parts, but I just don't care. So the faster I can be done with this, the better. A lot of people don't know that most or all auto parts stores, at least in the US, will take oil free of charge. They have to by law. This way people don't pour it in their backyards or whatever. So I always just pour it in the bottle from the new oil, cap it up, and when I get half a dozen, I just drive over to my local auto parts store and drop them off, no questions asked. Disconnect a single electrical connector. You lift the hood halfway up and then lift it right off. It's very easy. It makes maintenance a lot easier. I forgot to do it at the beginning of this video, but I couldn't get to the spark plug, so that's why I took it off. <laughs> I 
From a service perspective, the only difference between the X-T1 and 2 is the X-T1 is a single piston and the X-T2 is a dual piston. All the steps are the same. The nice thing about spark plugs these days is that they come with a protector to avoid messing up the gap from the factory, so you don't even have to check the gap. Just understand that you're threading a steel plug into an aluminum block. Be very careful to hand thread it until it's snug with your fingers and then snug it with a wrench. Don't over tighten it, it'll strip the threads out and you'll be really, really, really sorry. This step is optional, but if you do it every year, it'll keep it clean. Again, another optional step, but in my opinion, it makes steering easier. So if you know nothing about grease guns or how they work, it's very simple. There's these little nipples called zerks where you can inject grease. You should always clean it off first and then hook your grease gun on and pump until you see the grease start coming out from somewhere around the joint. This is a $10 Harbor Freight grease gun and regular off-the-shelf axle grease. A lot of people don't know that you have to grease the wheel hub too. The rear axle is lubricated by the transmission fluid, but the front one is just lubricated by grease. So midway through greasing, the tube ran out, so this is a bonus, you get to see how to put a tube in. You just unscrew the top, pull the old tube out, put the new tube in, and screw the top back on. There is a spring inside you have to retract first. That makes it possible to put the new tube in. The other thing to note is that there's usually some air in the top. The way I always got that out is I just unscrew the tip off the grease gun and keep pumping until no more air comes out and then screw the tip back on. I will warn you, grease guns are greasy, so plan to get dirty. I'm a big fan of Fast Orange myself. I ended up having to spray this thing down with degreaser after I got done because my hands were so greasy. But it's fine. I, I haven't changed this tube in four years, so they last a long time. You can really see how the slight bend in the grease gun tube really makes it possible to get into hard to reach places to hit those zergs. Again, just keep bumping until grease comes out somewhere and you're done. Make sure you clean the zerk really well otherwise you're pumping dirt inside your joint. Not a good idea.
I did of part one. I showed how to do the sharpening of the blades. Maybe I'll do a future video on the finer points of blade sharpening, but suffice to say, I took the blades off, sharpened them the same as the last video, and slapped them back on. With, of course, the old copper, never sees, goo stuff. Works great. In a perfect world, I would have scraped all the gunk off the deck, but this was my neighbor's and I didn't feel like it. The other optional way is to run it for 20 minutes with the uh, garden hose clean out plugged in so it's squirting water around inside there. That'll probably clean most of it off too. I just don't have the patience for that. See how you just hold the hood at a 45 degree angle, slip it in those two opened loops, and then pivot it down. Hook up one electrical cord and you're done. It's really easy to do and the hood isn't very heavy. You can see here I'm running the engine a little bit to get the oil all over it before I check it because we drained it bone dry. Some of the dipsticks will mark the level at cold or at hot. This one just says full or empty, so I just make sure it's at the full line. If you put too much in, you can always just drain a little back out. The purpose of this is to keep the guard out of the way so I can pull my car in. The tractor is pretty tight against my car to make it possible for the kids to get in my wife's car. If you just drill a hole through the plastic it will tear out in not too long. If you do it this way it should last pretty much indefinitely. It will probably outlast the life of the tractor. You can see I just took one of those metal angle braces and bent it in a vise and pop riveted it to the plastic. I used fender washers, which are stainless, and aluminum pop rivets, neither of which will rust. Put it through that, through the guard, through the angle bracket, and through another washer. And yes, I screw up plenty. I just usually edit that out. <laughs> but it does happen. I don't think I've ever changed oil on anything and not spilled some. By the way, shop rags from Costco, big win. Super handy, and I'm on the same pack of 100 I bought two years ago.